We just finished talking about the voting classifier. And here we used three different types of constituent ensemble members, a decision tree classifier, a support vector machine, and a logistic regression classifier. And uh, although they had very distinct uh, structure to, to how they were implemented, we really didn't have a good way of forcing them to cover different parts of the, the feature space. And, and in particular, even though the decision tree decision surface was distinct from the support vector machine decision surface, the, the set of samples that we tended to cover uh, with each of those overlapped quite a bit. And so they really weren't all that independent of one another. And in general, for ensemble methods to work well, we really need to uh, make sure that the different ensemble members have a, a good degree of independence from one another. And the question is, can we actually achieve this through higher order training uh, mechanisms? And, and so this is the topic of the next set of videos, and, and we'll talk about a variety of different uh, options here. Um, the first one is to provide different training uh, sets to the different ensemble methods. And there are two different uh, types of ideas here. One is pasting and the other is bagging. With pasting, what we do is sample from the full training set without replacement, which means once it's selected from one of the ensemble members, it isn't used again for any of the other ones. And this is an extreme way of handling things. The other idea is uh, bagging, which is short for bootstrap aggregation. And this is sampling with replacement. So what this means is that a training set element can be used in one ensemble me member, it can be used in two or three or even zero ensemble members. So once the training set is sampled for each of the ensemble members, the different models can actually be uh, trained in parallel. And we saw this with the voting classifier as well. Let's dig a little bit deeper into pasting and bagging here. So with pasting, all of the ensemble members have access to different uh, training data. So that's really gonna force uh, independence. But what this does mean is that the effective training set size for the individual models may not be large enough for us to uh, learn a reasonable classifier. What bagging allows us to do uh, is actually increase the size of the effective uh, training set for the individual ensemble members. But what this does mean is that the different ensemble members do get to see overlapping sets of uh, training samples. And, and so we're pulling back from this independence idea. However, because they are not uh, seeing uh, a complete overlap, we do achieve some degree of independence. In practice, what uh, gets done out in the real world is that we tend to prefer this bagging uh, idea and in fact, we have a hyperparameter that allows us to say how many uh, samples are going to get used in each of the ensemble members. Once we're done with the training process, a new query is handled just as we had with the voting classifier. So here, each ensemble member gets to see the query. It provides a vote, either a class label or a, or a probability distribution, if we're talking about a classifier, uh, or if we're really actually solving a regression problem, uh, it's going to provide a prediction in the in continuous space. In the classifier case, then we go through either a hard or soft voting process. For the regression case, we combine the different predictions in some way, the simplest of which is to uh, average the prediction of each of the models that, that we have uh, within the ensemble. All right, so that's a quick introduction uh, to this idea of bagging and pasting. And next up, we're going to try a quick experiment with bagging.